In the early 50s, you predicted that the world was becoming a global village. We're going back into the bicameral mind, which is tribal, collective, without any individual consciousness. But it seems, Dr. McLuhan, that this, this, this tribal world is not friendly. Oh, no. Tribal people, uh, one of their main uh, kinds of sport is uh, sort of butchering each other. It's, you know, it's a, it's a full-time sport in tribal societies. But I had some ideas. We got global and tribal. We, you know, we were going the to close, become a... The closer you get together, the more you like each other. Yeah. There's no evidence of that in any situation that we, we've ever heard of. That when people get close together, they get more and more uh, savagely uh, impatient with each other. Well, why is that? Because of the nature of man, or, yeah, or uh, his tolerance is uh, tested in that in those narrow circumstances very much. Village people aren't that much in love with each other, and the global village is a place of very arduous interfaces and very abrasive situations. Do you see any uh, pattern of this, and for example, the uh, desires of Quebec to separate? I, sh I should think that they are f feeling very abrasive about the uh, English community and about the, the way the, uh, South, the, the American South felt about the Yankee North a hundred years ago. And is this dis distancing, is this going to be a pattern right around the world? Now? Apparently, uh, separatisms are uh, very frequent all over the globe at the present time. Every country in the world is loaded with regionalistic, nationalistic little groups. But in Quebec, for example, they dis define it as the, the quest for identity. Yes, all forms of violence are a quest for identity. When you live out on the frontier, you have no identity. You're a nobody. Therefore, you get very tough. You have to prove that you are somebody. And so you become very violent. And so identity is always accompanied by violence. This uh, it seems paradoxical to you that uh, ordinary, ordinary people uh, find the need for violence as they lose their identities. So it's only the threat to people's identity that makes them violence. Terrorists, hijackers, these are people minus identity. They are determined to make it somehow, to get coverage, to get noticed. And all this is somehow an effect of the electronic age? Oh, no. But people in, in, in all times have been this way. Mm -hmm. But in our time, when things happen very quickly, there's very little time to adjust to new situations at the speed of light. There's very little time to get accustomed to anything. One of the big uh, violent make, violence makers of, the, of, our, of our century has been radio. Uh, Hitler was entirely a radio man and a tribal man. And what does television do then to that tribal man? Well, I don't think Hitler would have lasted long on TV. Like Senator Joe McCarthy, he would have looked foolish. He was uh, a very hot character. And uh, like Nixon, made, Nixon? A made a very bad image on television. He was far too hot a character. Much better on radio or on, uh, uh, on the movies. Not bad on the movies, which will take quite hot characters. But Nixon was hopeless on TV. <laughs> the, 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 the investigations now of the, the CIA and the FBI and even our own, God forbid, RCMP, is this, has this anything to do with the electronic well, age? Well, yes, because it, we now have the means to keep everybody under surveillance. In any, no matter what part of the world they're in, we can put uh, them under surveillance. It has become one of the main occupations of mankind, just watching other people and keeping a record of their goings on. And invading privacy. Invading privacy, in fact, just ignoring it. It's, it's, uh, everybody has become porous. They, they got, they got the, light, the light and the, and the messages go right through us. As, by the way, at this moment, right. uh, we are on the air, and right. we, at, on the air we do not have any physical body. When you're on the telephone or on radio or on TV, you don't have a physical body. You're just an image on the air. When you don't have a physical body, you're a discarnate being. You have a very different relation to the world around you. And this, I think, has been one of the big effects of the electric age. It has deprived people, really, of their private identity. So that's what this is doing to me? Yes. Everybody uh, tends to merge his identity with other people at the speed of light. It's called being mass man. By the way, one of the big marks of the loss of identity is nostalgia. And so revivals on all hands in every, in every phase of life today. 
revivals of clothing, of dances, of music, of shows, of everything. We live by the revival. It tells us who we are or where. Do you feel that the fact that you and I are have enjoyed the rewards of literacy, that we are more protected against television than the yes, child? I think you get a certain immunity. Just as you get a certain immunity from uh, booze by literacy. The, the, man, the literate man can carry his liquor, the tribal man cannot. That's why in the Muslim world or in the, in, in the native world, you cannot, uh, booze is impossible. It's the demon rum. However, literacy also, though, makes us very accessible to ideas and propaganda. The literate man is the natural sucker for propaganda. You cannot propagandize a native. You can sell him rum and trinkets, but you cannot sell him ideas. Therefore, propaganda is our Achilles heel. It's our weak point. We will buy anything if it's got a good uh, hard sell tied to it. What now briefly is this thing called media ecology? It means arranging various media to help each other so they won't cancel each other out, to buttress one medium with another. The, you might say, for example, that radio is a bigger help to literacy than television. Mm -hmm. But television might be a very wonderful aid to teaching languages. And so uh, you can do s some things on some media that you cannot do on others. And therefore, if you watch the whole field, you can prevent this waste that comes by one canceling the other out. In 15 well, um, seconds, I've got one no, question for you. How yeah. much television do you watch? Whenever I get a chance. <laughs> not too often.